Grab a microphone. I think Jeremy didn't know to pick the mic. There's a microphone around up to someplace, so it was. That's right there. Hello? Hello? Turn it on. Is it on or is it standby? It's on yellow. All right. It's on green. It's on green. We have There you go. So I am the IT audit manager, which is only because we brought Vicky into our group, so I was no longer just the IT audit firm. I was the IT audit manager because I'm the staff of one. <laughs> so uh, that's my story. Uh, before Wood Forest, I worked for 25 years for a small local company in Houston called Exxon, and uh, came to know some fine folks that way, some of which are in this room, technically be from almost the front room. Front room. Uh, what this talk is about is basically about the importance of knowing what's in your trash. And it seems like kind of a funny topic. Uh, and it is kind of a funny topic, but it's also very serious. So we get on to the presentation. Would you guys inform them of who I am and why this is important afterwards? <laughs> and no, I don't know them. I'm just rude to everybody. OK, the goals of the talk are the goals of the talk are to try to convince you that dumpster diving as an audit technique is important. It's a cost-effective uh, way of assessing a significant risk. It's often an under-audited risk. It helps keep your CEOs out of the news, and believe me, that's an important thing right there. It's a great way to increase overall security awareness, even having nothing to do with dumpster contents. <coughs> And it's a different kind of audit and it requires a different kind of planning and execution. And this is going to be, at least the last half of the talk, is going to be very practical about how you actually do a dumpster dive the right way. And there's all kinds of tips and tricks that I've developed over the years of doing this. And they'll all be reviewed. The agenda, just talk about goals, tell you about why you should worry about what's in the dumpsters. The history of dumpsters, fascinating topic. Um, then we get into the serious nitty gritty dive prep, dive execution, dive follow up, and dirty tricks, aka not getting dirty at all. And then the results and summary of questions. And then we go out for a beer or something. This is So, why should you worry? What are the control goals? Well, first of all, in my business, you have to comply with. Grand Ridge Wiley Act, so GLBA, you have to have a good security program. And that you know, information security is not just digital, it's also what's on paper. And it's also we what somebody writes down by hand on these papers. So all this is involved in information security. You may have to comply with HIPAA if you're in the healthcare industry. Uh, my wife is, she's a psychiatrist, and no, I don't get a discount for services. Um, According to Wikipedia, a known resource of great knowledge, uh, over 80 countries and independent territories have data protection laws. So it's important to worry about complying with regulations. It's also important not to make the news in a bad way. So there's all kinds of places online you can go to find out about data losses, data breaches, that kind of thing. This is one of them. Uh, here are just some examples. In 2013, there were 1,586 patients that had their medical records accidentally thrown in the regular trash at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. And the department expressed regret, and they had meant to dispose of them properly, but they didn't. Uh, Westlake Hills, Texas, this builder um, basically found a whole bunch of home loans and personal checks and purchase orders and site plans and all this kind of stuff. 
in a school dumpster because the person who was responsible for getting rid of that paperwork thought, well, I'll help the school's recycling program, so I'll just take it and drop it in my kid's school and everything will be fine, but it wasn't so much fun. Denny's, uh, if you want another reason not to eat there, uh, <laughs> back in 2012 there were 200 job applications that were found in a dumpster at Denny's and the restaurant manager asked what happened, or they asked the manager what happened, and um, they replied, it's supposed to be very, very safe, apparently someone has done something very, very wrong on this one. I would agree with that. That's a grand slam right there. Uh, other news, um, there's this exciting talk by this guy from Houston, uh, talking to you all about <coughs> dumpster diving, and there's two key questions to be asked here. Uh, if the news media find dumpsters, finds dumpster contents that are embarrassing, sensitive documents, do you really want your CEO to have to talk to the press about it? And I'm guessing the answer is no. Also of interest is, if a bad guy finds that, um, maybe to use for indemnity theft, do you think that your dumpster would ever be actually identified as the source of those documents? Probably not. The indemnity theft would probably go undetected as to where the source of it was, and people are probably assume it was some high-tech hacking operation that stole their identities. So I think dumpster theft stuff is a lot underreported. That's just my personal opinion. So from the site that we showed a while back, uh, this is a source of data losses, data breaches uh, for 2013. And you notice that disposal of documents up here is 5%. Hacking down there at the bottom is 37%. So we should definitely focus on hacking. 37% hacking, 5% disposal. But think of it this way. How much do you spend defending against hacking? How much do you spend on firewalls and secure coding, hiring Greg to come out here from HP, uh, all this stuff, that's where the expensive consultants part comes in. And, uh, you know, how much do you spend doing that versus how much do you spend just controlling what goes into your dumpster? I guarantee you controlling what goes into the dumpster is uh, less technical, certainly, and definitely less cost type thing. And from an audit point of view, if you're an auditor, how much time do you spend auditing that versus auditing all the high-tech stuff? So, the exciting history of dumpsters. Uh, back in the 30s in New York City, there was a big surge of disposal of packaging because of the expansion of commercial business and how they were shipping and packaging materials. So there were more trash, more rats, more bugs, more smells, all this kind of stuff. And people had to go out and empty all the trash bins into a big wagon and haul it away by hand. It was all very mechanical, manual, intensive uh, exercise. And then the Dempster brothers invented the Dempster dumpster in 1935. And uh, this was a big dumping place to load on the back of the truck and haul off to the dump site very effectively. So uh, that's where dumpsters came in. And one guy could haul all the trash to the dump in a pretty easy way. And it wasn't until later that they came up with the big modern trucks that dump multiple dumpsters into one truck. Back then it was just one truck, one dumpster. And dumpster, of course, is now a genericized trademark, like Kleenex or Jello, both of which I've found in dumpsters. <laughs> um, dumpsters have been used for a long time for, for kind of legitimate purposes for you know going through trash and seeing what you can find that you need. Um, here's some just pictures of people doing that. I can tell you that years ago my wife decided she wanted to make champagne at home and it happened to be approaching New Year's Eve so we were a lot younger then. We went down to a very ritzy restaurant and harvested all of their champagne bottles out of their dumpster because there was really expensive to buy champagne bottles at the local homebrew shop that was free right there. And they were high dollar bottles, so it was great stuff. So there's legitimate use for people going through dumpsters, and people do. And people also go through looking for political information. So here's this thing about, uh, if you remember when Sarah Palin had her speaking contract ex exposed for the amounts and all that kind of stuff, because someone found it in a dumpster, an investigative reporter found it in a dumpster. Uh, the main reason for this slide actually is that my boss hates Sarah Palin with passion and it just jabs him a little bit when I put it in. Not that I'm all about it. Um, legal disclaimer. The law, and this is part of the serious part of the talk. 
the laws on what is free and what's okay for you to get out of a dumpster vary by state. So you definitely need to know something about the law wherever you operate. And uh, I don't, but I do know some attorneys that do. And the important other thing to notice is that crooks don't care about the law. So is, is it okay to get into the dumpster? So you, know, you as an auditor or a security professional might be hampered by that, but the, the crooks really aren't. So consult your attorney or your company's attorney really well before you start getting involved in going through dumpsters, especially if your dumpster is shared by more than one company. I mentioned that we're a big retail partner with Walmart, and yeah, I don't want to go there. Um, so the summary so far is that dumpster con contents do get examined by people looking for things. Uh, they also get used for identity theft, and that probably gets unreported, underreported. So you really should dive into your company's dumpsters uh, to find out what's in there as an audit exercise or as a security professional. Um, we make the big point at the bank that my job as an auditor is not to make sure that the security is right. That's the job of the security people. My job is to go along behind them and kind of double check things and challenge them on some things and make sure that you know it's had a second set of eyes on it. My, but it's their primary responsibility is that everything is secure. So the security professionals, in terms of information security, I think the dumpster contents is part of your responsibility. And it's also part of the auditor's responsibility to go behind you and double check, uh, even if that means climbing into the dumpster. So let's climb into some dumpsters. Uh, on the topic of dive preparation, there's three things. You need information, you need equipment, and you need to assemble your team. By the way, I'll make this presentation available to whoever uh, if you want to email it to me or I'll give it to the organization, they can distribute it. So for dive preparation, you need to know what information should not be in your dumpster. You need to know for your business or your industry or your company or the company that was hired to do this as a contractor, you need to know what is sensitive information. So it may be that, you know, our plan to expand into having branches in Alaska, which we're not, um, I think, but you know, that kind of uh, important strategic information might be something you wouldn't want to have in the dumpster. Definitely customers' accounts and balances and social security numbers and stuff are things that you shouldn't have in the dumpster. In the medical business, it would be a whole different set of things. In the construction business, it would be a whole different thing. It's just, you know, every company has some types of things that should not be in the dumpster. You need to know what your company's trash looks like. Fortunately, in our building, where my office is, which is kind of our back office operation, our bags are clear plastic, and all the other tenants that we lease out part of our building to have different looking bags. So it's real easy for me to tell what our trash looks like as opposed to what um, another company's trash looks like. Now, they actually like it when I go through their trash as well because they like to know if they've got a problem. And some of them in the past who are not there anymore have had problems. So one technique we do is called salting the trash. Now, everyone in this room needs to at this point be sworn to secrecy that you will not ever discuss this matter with any other wood for with any wood forest customers or especially employees. Right? Oh, cool. I walk around every once in a while before we do a dumpster dive. And I've got these really cool hot pink post-it notes, and I tear little bits of them. And I write a number on the floor, maybe east or west for which part of the floor. And I wad them up little bits. And I go walking through and and I dump them in people's trash. So at the other end, when I'm examining the trash, I know where that bag came from. And I know that we got trash from every floor that we have operations on. And I know, you know that's right. So knowing what your trash looks like, if all your trash from all people in the same building looks the same, you can't tell them apart, you can salt the trash and you can tell, you know, is that our trash or not? Um, that's where this comes into important. You need to get tenants' permission and reporting instructions because if that company found out that I was going through their trash, even though they're a tenant in our building, there could be legal problems for me. So I need to be sure that the tenant is aware that I'm doing this and I have their permission. I also need to ask them, if I find something juicy out there, and I mean information wise, um, what do you want me to do about it? Who do you want me to tell? Them? Do you want me to just walk in and tell the secretary that you know, I've got these healthcare records out there? Or do you want me to go to your CIO or who are you? So work with the tenants and stuff. Um, know if you have any hazardous waste in your trash. 
Uh, fortunately, I don't work for a hospital system. I'm not quite sure how you'd handle this in that scenario. But find, you know, make sure that you know what is in your trash. If there's any hazardous chemicals, body parts, whatever. <laughs> You need to make a management and tenant reporting plan. Like I said, you need to not only know with your tenants who you're going to report findings to, but you need to know who in your management you're going to report findings to. Because it's really important to get the right person involved in this to make sure that changes happen if you find something bad. You need to know when the dumpster gets fed. Um, we have two main buildings in the town that our bank is based in, um, which is a suburb of Houston, so it's how you would it. There's the main operation center, and then there's the executive building, kind of separate. And their trash, unfortunately, gets taken out at 1 o'clock in the morning by the cleaning crew, and gets picked up at 3 o'clock in the morning by the dumpster company. Um, that cuts into my sleep, and it really kind of gives you a short window to work. But it's no sense in showing up there at 4 in the morning and finding that the truck's already been here and out. So you need to kind of learn about the schedule of when the trash goes into the dumpster and when it's um, be aware of any special events um, that are going on. I'm a popular guy at the bank being an audit, and everybody invites me to all their parties, so I pretty much know when there are parties and when there's going to be a big birthday cake, which half of which is going to end up in a dumpster, is going to attract rats, and maybe even plan the dumpster dive around that activity. <laughs> so, um, also, you don't want to do a dumpster dive right after they've had security awareness training. And this all goes into how you plan it, who you tell what you're going to do. We tell as few people as possible. We kind of have license from the CEO to do this whenever we feel like it, but we also have license to not tell them what we're doing. Um, and you also want to keep into account the end of business periods. Typically, right at the end of a business period, people have a whole bunch of papers, and they're working furiously on them. And the day after all those reports are due to the board, all that paper has to go out. So that might actually be a good time to do a dumpster dive because that's when there's more likely to be sensitive things out in the trash. Right? Uh, I can tell you I was at this uh, chili cook-off party here. Uh, they didn't know I, that was why I was there, but I was there at the chili cook-off and enjoyed it. It was really good. And we did a dumpster dive that night. And a lot of the chili went to waste. <laughs> so uh, equipment needed. You need a step ladder. Uh, to get into the dumpster, physically to climb into the dumpster in most cases. You need a long stick with a hook on the end of it. You can improvise something with a nail. It's basically, you know, if there's a bag that you really don't want to climb in to get, but you can hook it with a long stick with a nail on it, you can hook it and bring it up. Uh, you want to wear long mowing clothes. We actually have our, our uh, uniforms, which, if you can see this, it says dumpster diving tee. <laughs> uh, company paid for that. So, we don't actually wear these when we do them, we just wear them after we do them for fun. But um, you want to definitely bring a change of footwear. No, no need to explain that. You need emergency phone numbers on you. You need to be able to call the tenant when the police pull up and say, what the hell are you doing in the dumpster? And you have to be able to say, I have these people's permissions and they know that you might call me at some point. And you want to have their emergency phone numbers, you want to have your own commercial, your own company's uh, emergency get out of jail free phone numbers in your, your pocket. <laughs> you want to take gallon baggies, because if you find messy paper that you really want to save, but you don't want to deal with it, it is messy condition, you stuff, stuff in the bag and you're good. You want to take a box for non-messy paper or for toy cars or nifty giveaway pens or whatever you might find out there that's kind of cool that you want to keep. <laughs> um, we had a lady whose car burned up in the parking lot because basically somebody was dripping hot oil, pulled up to where the front of their car was over grass, the hot oil hit the grass, set the grass on fire, set the car on fire, set her car on fire. So a week later we did a dumpster dive and I happened to find this really cool toy car. <laughs> so she was looking for a car, I knew she was needing to replace her car, so I gave her a head start with this told her water and baby would grow. <laughs> it was kind of cool. Uh, you want a portable table for sorting. Uh, this is part of our team. Uh, that's me in the dumpster, looking my best, and part of our team out there. And they're hurting their backs, bending over, sorting through all these trash bags on, on the ground, right? So take a plastic table that you can sanitize later, and um, you know it will be kinder to your backs. And take some latex exam gloves. Uh, take Lysol for sanitizing the air before you get into the dumpster and kind of during the process. 
And of course, take hand sanitizer. Um, the team that you need, you need auditors. You're going to have an in the dumpster person. That's typically me, because I just like doing it. And then you're going to have the out of dumpster sorter people. Now, the in dumpster person, you want to have an up to date tetanus shot. Uh, it is the highest honor on the team. You get the most good. You get the first pick of the toy car when it comes out. Who uh, doesn't do that? Uh, and it is a messy job, so address appropriately for that. The out of the dumpster team is a lot less messy. It's a great team builder. It's a great thing to invite people to participate, especially if they have, how do I put this, been fingered by a previous dumpster dive as a problem party, you might want to invite them to come and go through the trash with you next time. Uh, it's just an option. It's a great way to welcome a new auditor. We, we've had uh, about four people come into our group in the last few years, and each one of them within the first two weeks on the job has been in the dumpster with me, and I'm proud of that. And they're all ladies. Uh, so you also want to take along an objective third party. You don't want somebody saying, you didn't find that in the dumpster. You know, I didn't put that in the dumpster. You, you, you planted that yourself just to make yourself look good. You want to take a, a non-involved third party, preferably like the security officer. Take them with you. They don't have to do anything. They just have to witness that, yes, in fact, you found that in the dumpster. That'll help out a lot, a lot. You also want to take along a photographer, press agent, lookout, whatever you want to call them. Um, part of the benefit of doing a dumpster dive is the the, the ripple effect it has on IT security and security in general that goes through the company after you do the dive because people say, holy crap, there's a guy from audit out there in the trash. They really do that. Well, you, want, you don't want to do it at 2 in the morning when nobody's watching. Or if you do, you want to have a video on display in the lobby the next morning. Um, you need to have some photography. You need to have a little press agent. You need to get the word out that this is happening. And you definitely want to consult your company attorney, as we've discussed. Okay, if you get nothing about the technical side or the practical side of playing a dumpster dive, planning a dumpster dive, and executing the dumpster dive, if you get nothing out of this whole talk other than this one thing, this is the most important, especially safety feature of doing a dumpster dive. Now, we already talked about how you have a ladder, right? You get your ladder. And Take that folded up metal letter and you walk up to the dumpster in question quietly. I'm wearing tennis shoes for a reason. You walk up quietly and you bang it onto the dumpster <laughs> and you quietly listen. And if you hear, if you hear, then it's okay. So you don't want to climb in where there's some drunk you passed out. <laughs> That's bad news. I've never done that. You don't want to climb out where there's, um, oh, I don't know, somebody else in there. Because <laughs> they get into those things. I don't know about up here in Kentucky, but we've got like, raccoons and possums and every kind of marsupial you can imagine that are out there going through the trash and stuff at night. And so you really don't want to surprise them. So the, the approach, bang, and listen is the, the key technique there. And as funny as that is, it's very serious. So you don't want to climb whenever the deposit. Um, you want to spray the unfriendly airspace with Lysol before you hop in, because that will keep you from getting sick and keeps it from smelling bad, or at least it doesn't smell the same bad. <laughs> um, you want to. You, you have to decide if you're going to be able to climb in, or if you have to climb in, or if you're going to be able to work from outside. You may, if it's a relatively small dumpster, you might be able to work from outside with a stick with the hook on it, right? And pull bags out that way, or you might have to climb in. If you do climb in, and you're doing this by yourself, which I did the first few times, take the ladder in with you. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Because <laughs> um, things can happen to that ladder, and somebody thinks they're funny, and you're stuck in a dumpster. So not that that would ever happen to me. So um, leave bathroom and hazardous type bags alone. If you see something that says biohazard, look over here. Don't look in that one. Uh, if you see something that's obviously the trash from the bathroom, usually cleaning companies kind of separate those tasks out into different bags and whatever. So um, in our case, with clear bags, it's really easy to see. Oh, that's toilet paper. I'm not getting in there. Um, what you look for 
depends upon your business, of course. But look for computer printed materials, look for rolled up diagrams, look for forms, look for CDs that people have thrown out thinking that they can't shred them because it'll mess up the shredder, so I'm going to throw it in the trash and it's got all this data on it. Or look for hard drives. Um, we did uncover a hard drive from a law firm that officed down the street from our building. We're not quite sure how it got in our dumpster, but I guess their dumpster was full, so they threw their hard drive with all their customer information into our dumpster. Um, they were not happy to get it back on the end. We shut it at the door. Um, and anyway, look through for bags in the, in the, when you're in the dumpster, you look through what bags are in front of you, and you decide, does that one have computer paper or rolled up diagrams or CDs or whatever in it? And if so, you pick them out of there, put them out of the dumpster, so that you can sort them outside the dumpster. You don't want to stand in a dumpster for any longer than necessary. By the way, we tend to not do this during July and August in Houston. This is a gist. So, you examine the bag contents outside of the dumpster on the folding table, and you can put messy things uh, into the baggies as needed to put non-messy things in the box. And above all, do not leave a mess, because the people who you will later find out that you need help from, and I'll get to that in a minute, um, they don't want to come out there and find that their nice, clean driveway or parking lot or whatever has all this trash over it, because you guys were out there rooting around in the dumpster. So clean up after yourselves and don't leave a mess. Above all, have fun. Uh, you can make it a rite of passage, team builder kind of thing. Uh, note, though, as much fun as you're having, don't serve refreshments. Okay, that's just not a good idea. Um, another goal here is when you're doing this, as I said before, when you're doing this, be seen doing it. Figure out some way, even if it's a video to play later on, figure out a way that everybody knows that you've done it because there's of no value or it's of diminished value if people don't know that you're doing it. You don't want to be sneaky, you want it to be known that it's being done. Um, have a group examination of what you find in the dive with that objective third party there so that you can testify, yes, this was in the trash, it was legitimately there. And then you need to do kind of a risk assessment of what you found. You need to assess these items. Is this a really important thing or is this kind of like, yeah, it's not that big a deal. Because you want to be able to report to management in the right way. Um, on the dive follow-up, you want to find out where these things came from, right? So you find a, a, a printout, and I'm, I'm speaking fictitiously here, since I only work for one company, I can't, you know, like, people I know who are consultants can say, well, I found that this one company, you know, uh, I can't do that, so I'll make up examples. But let's say I found a list from HR of a bunch of employees that for some reason are singled out, they have their socials and their addresses and their phone numbers and stuff like that. So you've got all this information there. Where did that come from? Well, it came from HR, obviously. Well, not necessarily. Maybe they printed that out for some manager over in the deposit operations, who then, they're the ones that put the trash. Okay? So you can't assume from the nature of the item where it really came from. But this is one case where audit logs and systems, at least you could maybe find out who printed that out, if your system works that way. Our systems pretty much do, so we can kind of tell who printed out any given piece of paper. Um, you can tell who it came from by associated items. If it's in some person's little desk uh, trash can, little tiny bag that came from a desk trash can, and it's in there with some junk mail they got, we pretty much know it was thrown away in that person's office anyway because it's associated with their mail. So you can kind of figure out where things came from that way. That's another case where the salting the paper slips into the bags comes into play. I know that, that bag, we pulled out the big bag that has a bunch of little bags in it. I know that big bag came from the fifth floor on the east side. So at least I've narrowed it down to where that came from. Um, and remember that you know the, the apparent source was an HR report came from HR. It's not necessarily the real source who threw that in the dumpster. So that's an important thing to discuss with management later. Anyway, you want to document the risks of what you found and prioritize the findings so that you don't waste management's time with trivial findings. You want to report this to appropriate management. Uh, you want to deliver the appropriate items to other tenants if, you're, if you find things that involve with other companies. Um, you want to offer uh, you know, to review this with executives or whoever might include it. You want to include a net risk assessment so they understand how, how severe or important this thing is. And you want to stress to your management that 
unless you do a dumpster dive every, at every location every night you know, through every piece of paper, that this is a small sample. This is a one-day thing where we got in the dumpster and we saw what was out there. Now, who's to say that the day before, that you know, the entire development source code wasn't out there? You, know, you don't know that. All you know is that one day you went out there and this is what we found. So you have to coach management on how to interpret your results. And unless you want to have a dumpster diving program where you're constantly in the dumpster, which I don't, um, you need to kind of coach management that this is just an indication you have a problem. It's not exactly that that person was the source of the problem. So other people may be guilty, it's just they weren't found that day. Um, so when you're talking to management, you want to encourage them to, if, they, if there is a problem, you want to train people broadly. You want to say, we found a problem, it was in one department. But it's only on one night, so who's to say the other departments aren't equally having problems? Let's train everybody. So you want to encourage kind of broad training. And again, you want to get publicity. We love it when the, you know, the COO tells everybody in the you know, we're going to have increased training on this topic because of something that was found. Just knowing that they have to take the training increases their security awareness. And isn't that what we're all about in this, in this room right now? Um, you want to give incentives if you can. You want to maybe work a deal out with management where if nothing is found on the next dumpster dive, we'll get a frozen yogurt party in the lobby. You know, that works for me. Um, now, you remember you all are sworn to secrecy. You've already said, you have sworn, I saw the hands go up that you would not disclose any secrets to outsiders because they're not worthy. Um, here's the trick about doing dumpster dives and not getting dirty at all. <coughs> you ready for this? Okay, if you do some of these well publicized, actually getting in the dumpster and be seen by a whole bunch of people getting in the dumpster, then you can just have the cleaning crew deliver the trash to your office. <laughs> and keep it all on the down low. I pay, I pay Rocio 20 bucks, whatever she does. It. And she goes around and she, she is hip to this, so she takes the, 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 the kitchen trash and the bathroom trash, and takes it out to the dumpster. So life is normal, nobody notices anything. And the desk trash, she puts it in a separate little bag, which she does anyway, just for various reasons, but she puts it in a separate bag. So that's the only thing she brings to my office. And she just brings it in, she has a key, she brings it in, she leaves it behind the door where nobody sees it, and we'll go a few days and build up, you know, a few days worth of trash. And we can go through it kind of an after hours and nobody sees that we're doing it. And all they remember is, oh, that time they were out in the in I saw them out in the parking lot. They were going through all this stuff. They still think that's going on. We haven't actually been in a dumpster for like months now. You know, every few months we'll do one, and, you know, whatever. So, uh, so you can do that, but you can't tell me can't um, I know you all want to know the results of this. How, you know, what'd you find, right? Um, how much of this stuff did you find? How bad was it, or whatever? And of course, I can't tell you that. I can tell you that. Because of uh, talking about this to our local ISACA chapter and being friends with uh, other IT auditors, because you know we all have to be each other's friends because nobody else wants to be our friends. <laughs> so uh, you know, in, in that close circle of people, I found that basically everybody who's ever actually done this has felt that it was worthwhile. That they found something that was like, hey, you know, man, you ought to be concerned about this, or that they felt that. You know, we didn't actually find anything, but we got such buzz about it and such comments about the people that obviously it really heightened security awareness. And so either one's great. The second one's actually a better. It's kind of better if you don't find anything, but if you get publicized. So um, you may find that you have a problem. You will increase security awareness. And you have a great thing to talk about over dinner. Because, you know, I mean, our dinner time conversation is, you know, the, a horribly troubled person my wife has as a patient right now, that kind of thing. I get to say, yeah, but we found this really cool car in the trash. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to summarize here that you know this is a very cost-effective audit. Now you didn't notice any high maintenance, high cost items involved. You know, it's like clothes and a ladder. Um, it's often an un underlying risk. People assume that you know, that's just not going on. They don't bother to audit it. They spend all their time auditing firewall logs instead. It's a great way to keep your CEO out of the news. We, we make sure our CEO knows, the CEO knows that, that our intent partially is to keep him out of the news. 
It's fun, it's kind of funny, it's kind of stinky, but it's kind of fun. Uh, it's great publicity for audit because I guarantee you everybody in the building knows who we are. And uh, it, as I said, increases security awareness. It's a different kind of audit. It requires different planning, which is why I went through the practical parts of it with you there. It's definitely low tech. Uh, I actually do some high tech stuff at work. I don't just dumpster dive and look over procedures. You know, we do everything from password cracking to active attacks against our, our network and all kinds of fun stuff. But it's a low tech thing that pretty much anybody can do. So most of the people who come into our group are not IT auditors, they're operational auditors or compliance auditors. And they still get in there and do the dumpster dive with us because it's just all the same group, right? And even though it is low tech and it's not electronic at all, it's still information technology auditing. Okay. So, if you have any questions, <coughs> there's my name, there's my email address, um, or just put a note there next time and I'll find it. <laughs> um, but has anybody done this kind of thing? Has anybody done this? Uh, if you have any experiences you'd like to share with us, that'd be great. We pretty much do what we do. Okay. Well, I will tell you, I had, the last time I gave this talk, which was, this talk was built for our local second chapter, and um, when I gave that, we had this interesting conversation, I'll go through with you real quick. Um, I was trying to make sure I didn't have a um, People were saying, well, why don't you just go around the office you know, during hours or after hours and go through people's trash cans there at their desk because you know right where it came from and wouldn't go through all this hassle, right? Well, we are the kind of audit department that we want to be, so we're internal, we want to be seen as part of the team and part of the solution and not, you know, some enemy. So if you walk around and start looking through your trash at your desk, you're going to get pretty confrontational, right? And, but somehow, if it's already out in their minds, out in the dumpster, and you went through it and found it, well, their fault, you know, you, you were just doing your job. It wasn't, it wasn't confrontation, right? And the other part is that we have 24-hour operations, and people on most of our floors, 24-7, 364, close on Christmas Day. Um, and so if, if they saw us walking around looking at this trash can, they would call their buddy down and, you know, keyboard operations and they would say, oh, they're going around with the trash. So all of a sudden the second half of the experiment or the exercise would not be as fruitful as the first half, right? So there's lots of reasons why you do this instead of just going around to the desks themselves at the end of the day um, that I think are, are beneficial. Um, anyway, so that's the deal. So uh, I, I've organized a practical exercise, and for the other, those of you with appropriate footwear, um, Greg, can you lead them out to the dumpster? <laughs> um, Greg is not really appropriately dressed for this, but he'll lead the way and point you as to where the dumpster is. I will. I do have to tell you though, the first time we did this it was actually not not exactly as solo as myself and my coworker Raina. Uh, Raina is a buddy of mine, and she's this lovely lady who dresses like a fashion model, and she just always has these impeccable clothes on. And we had agreed, okay, we're going to go out to this location where we have some uh, operations kind of over a branch. <coughs> we're going to go out there, we're going to do a dumpster dive, and we're also going to go into the building and look on all the desks to see where we're leaving a bunch of important materials out on the desks. And uh, this was the... Uh, the part of our bank that is the mortgage department. And mortgage people have more information on you than the rest of the bank does because you give up so much information for a bank, so for our mortgage. So we were going to go do a desk check and a dumpster dive at the mortgage company. So we show up over there at about 6 o'clock in the morning, and I'm in there. I've got my white gone green because of mowing the lawn and tennis shoes on. I've got some holy jeans. I've got a uh, uh, ratty old Mickey Mouse t-shirt on. I'm ready to go. Right? I got the ladder. I'm ready to go. And we haven't really talked about the details of this plan too much before this. I'm kind of winging it. And, I, and I, so Randall pulls up in her BMW and steps out dressed to the nines. And I looked at her and I said, well, I guess we've already decided who's going to go in the dumpster and who's going to do the desk work, right? So, yeah, so be real clear with your team up front. <laughs> 
what the expectation is. But uh, Greg is addressed kind of like Raiden. Yes, Raiden was named after the character on Star Trek. He embarrasses her out of the box. Yes, sir. Have you seen a decline in the number of incidents since starting the program? In the, the news, or, in the news you, or at our bank, no, it, or in my circle of friends who do this? Yeah, your team, your review team. Um, in our review team, well, if I said we'd seen a reduction, that would imply that we had a problem at the start. Um, we've, seen, did it, we've seen a reduction, and we've had some wonderful frozen yogurt socials um, <laughs> lately, and you know, I'm convinced that as, as in control as we can be, we are, we are now there. Um, Do you have a target it, goal? A like, oh, target goal is always nothing. You know, nothing that could be in the slightest way perceived as anything that shouldn't be out there in the trash. And we've actually noticed that the, the amount of, the physical amount of the material in the dumpster is less now. Um, because people are just like, shredded, 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 everything is shredded. Out of, you know, Wall Street Journal, I don't care, shredded. You know, <laughs> so maybe, somebody, maybe somebody wrote something, you know, buy Exxon now. Corner, and so they you know, they well, they shred everything. It's good that they shred that stuff too, because then that salts the uh, information that's sensitive with stuff that's junk. Yeah, yeah. It, it absolutely does, and, uh, and that's all recycled. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so we, we have found that it has really been effective to do. Uh, the people I know who are other IT auditors who do this on a regular basis have seen similar results. That you know, if they bring it to management's attention once or twice. It's just, it's, I mean, it's embarrassing. How simple is it? Don't throw the stuff in the trash can. You know, dispose of a problem. It's simple. It's not something that's, that's difficult for them to expect their employees to, to do. So usually once a manager gets embarrassed by it, you know, once, that's enough, and it stops right there. And as long as you keep up with it and keep going with it and keep that security awareness, then it uh, seems to perpetuate itself. So, um, I've definitely seen that um, to be effective. And it's actually almost an effective sales tool. Um, we were out at this one branch that backs up, and unfortunately that branch shares their dumpster with a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> and this was in July. And they get their they get their stuff picked up at about 10 o'clock in the morning. So we were out there about 9 o'clock in the morning. And it was all in hot. And so I'm flying around there, and I was amazed, at, first of all, at how much good quality food is actually in the dumpster. It's like, well, no wonder people are going in there for kind of legitimate reasons to get food because they can't afford it. It's like, there's actually like, there's two dozen eggs right there that are really fine. Or, I mean, they're fine. I'm not going to take them home, but I think they're fine. <laughs> but we're out there stomping around in the dumpster, you know, and this lady from some other business on the strip there um, walks out and says, um, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm Vice President of Woodforce National Bank, and I'm here checking our dumpsters to make sure we're not throwing out trash that shouldn't be thrown out, like customer information. She's like, oh, well, that's cool. My bank doesn't do that. And my coworker, Mandy, said, maybe you should change banks. And then she did. And she got my card, and she wrote me a note, you know, so I may not know this, you know, but we just moved our account over to your bank because that was just amazing that you were out there doing that. So, you know, there's all kinds of reasons that, again, you want to be seen, you want to be public information that you're doing. Um, and obviously, doing that is what got me a, a free trip to Louisville, Kentucky, <laughs> when I unfortunately had a major on to do on Friday morning. That's tomorrow, isn't it? And, and I don't dare attach into our network by VPN from using the old security. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I'll go back to the name withheld um, hotel that we're staying at and trust that even way better than this just because of people who are in the room here. What type of information do you look for whenever you're going through papers? Well, it's really whatever is important not to be in the dumpster. Um, you know, in our case, we we're looking for things that could be used for identity theft information. Um, you know, just the usual socials, names, and account numbers, and that kind of thing. We're looking for strategic information, like uh, a proposal to build a new branch at this location, or to expand into another state, or something like that. Uh, HR records, you know, uh, of, all, of all types. Uh, network diagrams. Uh, draft copies of contracts, just all kinds of things that shouldn't be out there. And it would depend on the industry that you're in as to what 
those things are. You know, in healthcare, um, it would be a whole different set of things, although some of them are the same. So, you know, if you work for, in a competitive business, it might be information that was kind of proprietary to you and gives you your advantage over your competitor. Just basically whatever shouldn't be out there. So it's, and it's usually on computer paper, although sometimes it's handwritten notes. Um, that's the most common thing. But also, like I said, CDs and thumb drives and hard drives are really important to watch for. But you, you see a lot of shredded. Do you bother to shred it? Right? Well, almost everything gets shredded. We have these massive cross cut shredders and all that good stuff. Um, they'll handle CDs just fine. After, after we crack all of them in the microwave first. Are you aware of that? How to destroy a CD? I think probably. Mm -hmm. Okay. You put it in the microwave until you get a little lightning show. Mm -hmm. Don't do it too much because it smells out of the kitchen. Uh, it smells out of the kitchen if you do it too long, but like put it in the microwave. And you can put several of it in there to kind of spread them around so the surface is distributed. And you get to go, and as soon as you see the you turn it off real quick. And it just crackles that uh, aluminum layer. It just, yep. just ruins it totally. I can't believe anybody ever gave you information. And then you have to take them out and throw them away. And if you do more than about you know three or four in a row, the kitchen starts to smell. <laughs> and, you know, they're probably the people who brought the fish for lunch. So uh, <clears throat> Interesting numbers to find. Uh, this happened at an old company. This was not uh, an employee whose job it was to look, apparently it was just her hobby was looking for dogs and finding stuff. I'm not here to judge, it's hot. Uh, but she found something she thought was pretty weird, a, a jacket that looks brand new, and some other things, and a, a double bag that also looked brand new. And she looked inside, oh my goodness. And I won't say what's it, but she called the police and it led to a capture of somebody. Hmm. But nice to see it actually uh, come handy and uh, do some more justice. <laughs> Usually get people arrested. So that's <laughs> <laughs> how frequently did you? Uh, sorry. How frequently did you uh, die? Well, we we started out. We you know we did one. We said that that went kind of interesting. And let's do another one. And um, we try to do about three a year. And um, that seems to be enough that it gets. Let's be out there, but it's not kind of over. I, mean, I don't want to make a career out of dumpster diving. Um, but that's, you know, we, we do about three a year, and we're regulated by the, the OCC, that's our bank regulator that comes in all the time. And when we first started sharing with them that we were doing this, they were like, wow, really? Are you kidding me? And, you know, we've, we've had some other banks contact us, um, but they couldn't tell us how they learned about that, but they wanted to contact us. <coughs> To go about doing it. And I'm pretty sure it came from somebody in the government that thought it was a good thing and we're telling you. <coughs> so that's why I'm not here telling you all about it. Um, so if you do a dumpster dive and you find something cool, let me know. Um, or you know, if you have a really disgusting story, you can keep it to yourself. <laughs> but, um, I think it's a really good thing to do. It, you know, it, it serves that purpose of keeping your CEO out of the news. That's a big plus right there. Um, it definitely increases security awareness, even if it has to do with you know password strength. I mean, people are just more security aware if they know that people are watching like that. And we're willing to go to that length to check that everything is, is kosher. So um, I think it's a great thing to do, and it's really low cost. It's really low tech. Anybody can do it. And you get cool t-shirts. I got this at Cafe Press. I didn't design it. It was just a design they had out there. I kind of like it. Um, and got me a free trip to yeah, Fair City. I mean, how cool is that? So, well, thank you for coming. And um, I was kidding about Greg leading you out to the dumpster. Oh, no. <laughs>